In today's session, we're going to continue on the series on organizational opportunities, stories, and lessons learned from the front line. This is our last story in this series, and then we're going to focus on coaching, and the next series is going to be on coaching. But today's story comes to us from a manufacturing company that was a make the stock environment. They were dealing with a lot of production pressures to build stock to be able to fulfill customer demand within 24 hours of placement of the order. And there was a lot of issues with downtime, unplanned downtime on equipment that was preventing them from keeping equipment up and running and to meet the customer demand. And because of the unplanned downtime, maintenance was constantly reacting to problems. And with the pressure to keep production going, there wasn't sufficient time to prevent the solutions, but to just band-aid the solutions to get the equipment up and running as fast as possible. And then how do we go about improving this situation when we have lots of pressures from production to keep stuff going and we don't have the proper time to fix the equipment properly to prevent more unplanned downtime? So it's a situation I see a lot of companies deal with. So how do we go about doing that? So first of all, we need the proper mindset for change. So first of all, conscious awareness is the state of being aware of what's happening in your environment. So we're constantly reacting. We're dealing with problems after they happen. How do we change that mindset? So the first thing is we're in that reactive attitude, right? Dealing with issues after they occur. Now we need a shift in perspective. So we need to do something different or think something different or have a different mindset about our current situation or environment to change that environment. So in this case, the change in paradigm is understanding the underlying approach or underlying assumptions that are causing the problem. And then we want to move to the proactive approach where we focus on preventing issues before they occur. So if you have unplanned downtime and equipment that happens sporadically and it's excessive, how do we get out of that reactive mode? Regardless of the type of problems we're facing, we need to be excellent in cause and effect thinking. So what does that mean? So the effect is the outcome or result or consequence of some action. So it's really the symptoms that we're dealing with in the organization. What is a cause? It's something that brings about the effect or the result. What's the root cause? It's the initiating cause or a condition or a causal change that leads to an outcome or effect of interest. So what we really want to do is get to the root cause, but to get to the root cause, it takes a lot of effort. So a lot of times we don't have the time to do that. So we just put band-aid solutions in place. And of course the problem keeps reoccurring and reoccurring. We never get out of that reactive mode of reacting to problems. So when we look at problem solving, one thing we need to understand is not all problems are created equal. Problems have different levels of severity. And depending on that severity, we need to focus on those problems that are most critical and not worry about the problems that are trivial or don't cause us disruptions in our system. And so when we look at an organization, we want to strive to be, have all our processes highly reliable. And we take action to deal with problems in a timely manner. But the undesirable effects is that resources don't have sufficient time to do the proper analysis on problems, and then resources are overwhelmed with dealing with issues. Then there's other tasks that demand the resources time. That leads to resources spending a lot of time on non-value added activities or reacting to problems, and then productivity and quality suffers as a result. So if we go back to what's causing that, the mindset is all problems are created with the same level of priority. So what we need to do is change that mindset. Not all problems are created equal. But when we look at risk evaluations and we look at problems, we need to evaluate the risk of each of those problems according to the performance of the company. So from a system perspective, and when we look at risk, we look at three criteria. So the first one is the severity. So if that problem occurs, what's the severity relative to the disruption to the business, not for a process, not for a department, but for the business. So we create a score based on the severity. And so the higher the score, the more severe effect that has on the company, the lower the score, the less severity it has. And typically that score is somewhere between one and 10. Once you set the severity, the severity can never change. So you can't reduce the severity of the failure. So that's one thing we need to understand. Next, we look at the occurrence. So the more likely something is to occur, 
we have a higher chance of occurrence, the higher that occurrence score is, which contributes to the risk assessment. And then lastly is the detection. So the ability to detect the problem before it happens. If we have less ability to detect the problem, it gets a higher score. So now we take the severity times the occurrence times the detection, and that gives us a score or a ranking of the risk to the company. Each one is scored one to 10. You multiply the three together. That gives us a risk ranking that we take and we prioritize the highest risk problems first. Those are the ones we want to focus on putting permanent corrective actions in place because of two things. One, it happens either frequently or the severity is severe for the company. And we don't have the detection methods to identify when that's going to happen. So when we start looking at this is basically the formula for failure modes and effects analysis or FEMA that we can use for each problem that occurs. So when we do that, we can start evaluating and putting action priorities based on the highest risk numbers. And then we can take that and focus our efforts and focus on the critical few and start putting corrective actions in place to deal with the root cause and eliminate those as problems. And so when we start getting a team of people together and we start looking at the problems, and in this case, we don't need to have the equipment down when we're doing this problem solving. So when we have an issue, we need to take the extra time, get extra resources to analyze the situation. Then offline, after we get the equipment up and running, we can start analyzing the reason for the failures, get to the root cause, put in countermeasures to prevent those things from occurring, and also put detection methods in place so we can detect when there's an issue before it happens and take the appropriate corrective action before the equipment goes down. And so by doing this, we're starting to switch from the reactive mode to the proactive mode. We must choose what are the best ones to focus on, and then the priority should be on severity first, then occurrence, and then detection. So once we start doing that, we switch from that reactive mode to the proactive mode. So in this case, we took the maintenance department, we took engineering, we took the supervisor, we started spending about an hour a week analyzing the situation, collecting data, doing some analysis, getting to the root cause, and putting permanent countermeasures in place to prevent those issues from happening. Within a few weeks, we started to see the number of unplanned downtime issues reduce. So that's where we start to get the free up the time of maintenance staff to do more proactive stuff. And it's like a snowball rolling downhill. So the snowball starts at the top small and starts slow. Then as it moves, it gets bigger and starts to pick up speed and momentum. So it's exactly the same thing that what happens when we start switching from the reactive to the proactive. It's difficult at first, and then we start to pick up momentum and then it starts to increase speed and it also increases the effectiveness. So when we have that proactive mindset using the same logic we did before and all problems aren't created equal, we have a way to prioritize problems and focus and get to the root cause and put permanent countermeasures in place. What happens is our objective, we strive to be highly reliable. All problems are prioritized based on the risk to the organization. Then the action becomes problems with the highest risk are prioritized. Then we can focus our resources to have those critical few and get to the root cause and put permanent countermeasures in place. The resources have the time to properly deal with the problem because we're only focused on a critical few. Then we put permanent solutions in place. There are fewer problems that demand the resources time. And then the resources spend more time on value add activities and productivity and quality increases. So this is what we want is that proactive mindset. So we saw significant reduction in unplanned downtime. And of course that downtime was converted into productive time. And so we started to see increases in productivity. So it's not uncommon to see 20, 40, 60%, 80% improvement in productivity by reducing the unplanned downtime. So that's our session for today. Thanks for joining. Again, connect with me on LinkedIn, visit our website. We have all sorts of trainings on different topics, and then subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have lots of videos on change and mind shift and how to create a high performing organization.